In today's video, we're doing an April recap and May reset. Let's get right into it. Okay, so we did not do one of these videos last month because we did a quarterly review last month, but this month we are returning with the recap and reset. And the way these videos are pretty much gonna go is that of course, I'll start with a recap. So I'll do a recap of April and kind of focus in on some slow living favorites. I'll also go over some goals that I had for April and whether or not I accomplished them. And then I will give you a quick notion tour based off of what I have in store for May. Do a little bit of cleaning up because I have not looked at my notion in a couple of weeks. I was on vacation. Vacation. And then I will show you what my journal looks like for the following month, which is May, which is what we're in right now. Happy May. And talk about some goals that I have for May. Okay, so let's jump right into it. I have my planner here. I don't know if you've known this. If this is your first time watching one of these videos on my channel, I got this planner from McNally Jackson's in Soho in Manhattan. And it says it's the Ardium planner. I did find this also at mochithings.com, which I have been watching that website for a really long time. They have some really cool planner type stuff. So if you wanna snag one that looks like this, it's there. And it's one of those standard planners. It's not a bullet journal or anything like that. It has like the days of the week listed out. It has some space for notes. And it also has like a monthly calendar as well. So if you're looking for something very straightforward, minimal, but also like structured in the sense of a traditional planner, this is definitely the way to go. I will probably do a review of this planner at the end of the year, but so far I'm really, really liking it. Sorry that the lighting just suddenly changed, you know, natural lighting does that. Anyway, so let's look at the goals that I had for April. Okay, so the first thing that I did wanna just mention is that every month I put money away. So that is one of the goals that I had for April and I successfully did that. I also wanted to start my gardening seeds and I finally did that. I did it all the way at the end of April, but I did accomplish it. So I'm really, really happy about that. I did post a couple of pictures on Instagram if you're curious about what exactly I put in there. Actually, I think I did a morning routine video recently and I gave a full on tour of all the seeds that I got, which were a lot of them. So you can check that out. Another thing that I had for April goals is to start my Q2 checklist. So you'll see more of this in the little notion tour that is in this video, but I wanted to start that since the end of Q1 was the previous month. I also needed to get a gift for my mom because my mom's birthday is in April. That was also accomplished. So far, I've accomplished everything here. And then the last goal that I had for April was to plan my time off because I did go on vacation last week. And so I just wanted to plan a bunch of things that I wanted to do during that time that were both productive, getting things done around the house and just personal things, but also, you know, scheduling in some fun time as well. That is very, very important, by the way. So I crossed pretty much everything off of that list over here, which is where I put in my monthly specific goals. I do it in this calendar kind of spread. I'll cover a little, I guess it's a little, it's a little private, but that's essentially what that looks like. And then I will also go into my little end of month reflection. I do this at the end of every single month and I dedicate one of these blank pages to do the reflections. And if this is the first time you're hearing about this, these are the prompts that I use to do my monthly reflections. First is my top three accomplishments. And so I'll just go all the way down. The top three accomplishments that I have for April is one, I got monetized, y'all, on YouTube, which is so wild. Five years in the making. I started this channel five years ago and I'm finally monetized. So thank you so, so much for being here and being huge supports. Uh, it's just mind blown. I'm still processing that, but that was my top, one of my top three accomplishments. The next thing was starting the seeds. And then the third thing was working on spring house projects, which again, I'll show you later on in this video. And the next prompt is feelings towards my long-term goals. So I'm obviously really, really happy with how my long-term goals are shaping out right now. These are big, big positive wins that I had in April and I'm just so proud, especially about the YouTube thing. Not just work things, but also personal things have been a success. So really, really happy. The next prompt is my focus for May. So we'll get more into this once we do the whole May part of this video. So I'll get back to this. The next prompt is upcoming challenges, which is also part of the May thing. So we'll get back to that. The last prompt is how to overcome those challenges for May. So once again, we'll do this at the end of the video. So just, just keep that in mind. And then at the bottom over here, where I have some like 
I don't know, sidebar kind of prompts. These aren't super important prompts for you to keep note of, but for me, they're important because I'm trying to track my skin and I'm also trying to track how well I'm doing in terms of fitness and challenging myself because those are things that are related to my overall 2024 goals. So I do like a star rating when it comes to my skin and fitness. I gave myself a five star rating for my skin because as you can see, my skin is pretty darn clear. I'm not wearing any makeup. I had no major breakouts and my skin is very, very clear right now. Have been consistently doing the chemical peels as well. So April, A plus when it comes to skincare. And then my fitness, I gave myself three out of five stars because while I have been doing a lot of walking, I always do my 10K steps on my walking pad and Throughout the month, I also went to the park, so it ended up being like almost 20K steps on those days. And I'm really, really proud of those days. I also didn't really challenge myself when it comes to strength training. So I didn't really, you know, lift much or do anything that, you know, took me to another level when it comes to challenges. So that's why I gave myself a three star there. But overall, super, super happy with April. Have I been doing this the entire time sorry um super happy with april really really proud of myself when it comes to those kinds of things and if you did not know i had a really really big struggling moment in april if you have not heard yet i talked about this more so on my instagram because i did a dedicated post there but my bunny passed away in april so it was overall a tough tough mental health month for me so, you know, being able to do all of these things despite that, I'm really, really proud of myself. And I don't necessarily encourage anyone to like push through when they're having a big struggle mental health month or week or whatever length of time. And I've done a video on this, by the way. So I can link that video down below if you're interested on how to kind of maintain slow living practices as best as you can when you're struggling. Because in that video, I was really, really struggling. And so... Once again, I don't encourage pushing through and getting all of this done. It's just these things were getting done kind of before and after. So it ended up working out to my benefit in a way. By the way, thank you so much for people that, you know, checked in with me and showed me support through a comment, a message, a DM, whatever it may be. I really, really appreciate that. Um, but moving on, let's talk about some slow living favorites that I had for this month. So I kind of categorize it by products experiences and practices and I'll start with the products and I'll actually take you on a little tour right now so let's go okay so let me start off by saying that nothing in this room is 100% finished just yet there are some things that we need to finish up but I just wanted to show you the progress so far because there are products in the room in the bedroom that are part of my slow living favorites so starting with this area over here if you recall we used to have like a huge um dresser with all of our clothes in it and it was from our previous apartment and we finally decided especially because it was getting broken down that it was time to let go of it it was an ikea piece so we got rid of it long story short we put the tv up there and so the first product is or are these pillows i got these decorative pillows to put on this bench which we've had it was over here before but we just moved it over there so these decorative pillows i found them at Target and they were pretty affordable and they do match the style that I have going on in the house. I also got this little decorative pot. I plan on getting like a stand for it so that it sits up a little bit more but for now it's on the floor. Got this one at World Market. Okay and then the last thing. So where did all of our clothes go given the fact that we got rid of the dresser? So we have two massive closets in here and they're practically like, they're not walk-in closets, I can walk into them, but they're pretty substantial. So I'll show you mine. And we fixed these doors, by the way, they were actually a little too big, so Ian fixed them, thanks Ian. And so the next products are kind of these makeshift things that we did in here, DIY walk-in closet type of stuff. So this piece is from Ikea. Very, very simple, just a cube kind of storage solution. And then these drawer thingies are also from Ikea. And so all of the clothes that were in our dresser moved into spaces that look pretty much like this. Ian's looks pretty much identical. And then up on top, I got this acrylic thing here. I got this from Target. And so I just put all of the stuff that were like skincare, makeup type of things in my dresser or on my dresser over there. So 
now everything is in the closet and I also got this by the way this is like a hamper but I'm using it to just store clothing as well just like grab and go socks type of stuff and so it's it's like a little makeshift organization thing going on in the closet and I think it works really well so if you're looking for a DIY solution where you don't want something like built into your closet I think these are great great options and like I said Ian and I both are using those types of drawers and so those are the big things I think the last thing that I wanted to show you when it comes to favorites once again the place is kind of messy I apologize but this is just the reality of it we got this stand and we are using it as a nightstand. I didn't want a traditional nightstand that had drawers and was really big and bulky because we're trying to make the space light and airy. So we got this one and we went searching. We went searching for a really, really long time, but we finally settled on one from Target. And I really love the wooden texture. I love the angles. I love the color. I think it just brings in a nice earthiness into the room while also being pretty interesting. And it was the perfect height. I think the only thing that Ian wanted was something that was nightstand height so that worked out and then we just have our google home we have a little alarm clocky type type thing and that's pretty much it that's all we have for now we're gonna hide the cords and all of that stuff but yeah i'm now realizing i have one more thing to show you sorry <laughs> it is this clothing rack we got this clothing rack for about 50 dollars at ikea and it's really great quality it's really big and sturdy and i don't know I really like it. It's nothing too fancy. I wanted something minimal once again. Our clothes is just hanging all over it. But the idea is that the bike will eventually go downstairs where we have our little makeshift basement gym. And then this will move over there. And then it will be kind of like a decorative piece almost. And we'll hang our clothes on it. And yeah, give off that vibe. But once again, nothing's 100% in here but we're getting there. Okay, so those were quite a few products. I can link them all down below. Most of the things were from Target and Ikea, and I absolutely love everything so far. So yeah, I can link those down below. But the next kind of category is experiences, and I'll put some pictures on the screen so you can kind of see them. They are pulled from my Instagram account, so you can always check them out there first if you want to. But bagels and exploring New York on a Sunday morning has been a big experience for us this past April. So what do I mean by that? Pretty much we are originally from New York City. We love New York City in so many ways, but we dislike it in many other ways, which is why we don't live there anymore. But we do love us a New York City bagel and we do love, you know, exploring New York City when it's not super crowded and just stressful to get there. So our solution for that is essentially to visit New York only on a Sunday morning. That has been like the perfect time for us to visit. And so we've been doing that several Sundays out of April. That's essentially what we do. We drive into New York, we go to like a trendy bagel spot that we've been wanting to try. We tried pop-up bagel recently and we also tried Apollo bagels recently. And Apollo bagels has been so much fun to go to because there's also been a coffee shop right across the street that serves super unique kind of coffee drinks. I had a strawberry latte, like a strawberry coconut latte from the place across the street from Apollo Bagels and it's called Not As Bitter, by the way. And so it's just been a fun experience. And then after we get our bagels and coffee, we kind of go walking around, exploring the shops, going to bookstores and stuff like that. And it's just been fun. But another thing that I just wanted to mention is Fishtown. We did end up going back to Philadelphia this month as part of our vacation. So we went back to Fishtown. We discovered that we've been to Fishtown more than once before. I know I did a vlog talking about Fishtown recently, that was a creative retreat vlog, but we did find out that we went somewhere back in 2020 because I sat down at a restaurant when we were there recently and I recognized it immediately. And then we went back into our Google Maps and we saw that we were there in 2020. So it was really funny that we still consistently really love Fishtown. It's a really nice quirky, artsy, of course, kind of like old historic vibe. And I think that's the vibe that you get all over Philadelphia, but Fishtown in particular has really nice quirky shops that you can find really unique and cool things. So we had a really great time. Also the food there, incredible. Okay, and then the last category in my slow living favorites for April are practices. So one big practice that I liked in April, once again, it was kind of a tough month in terms of just like mental health, but I did a lot of reading. In April, I finished two books in April, which is huge for me. If you do not remember, 
my goal for this month when it comes to reading is to read one book a month and I read two books in the month and one of those books was like four over 400 pages so really really happy about that and I think in particular what I love about this practice from April is that Ian got into reading this month and he's really really into it right now and I'm just hoping fingers crossed that this wave kind of rides for a while because it's really fun to share an activity with your partner especially something as big as reading because reading has always been a huge part of my life so I'm just having a really great time practicing that alongside Ian. Okay enough talk on that let's get into the notion tour and clean some stuff up in there because i'm really anxious to do it right now okay so this is what the notion is looking like and essentially what i'm just going to be showing in here is cleaning up some of this stuff over here and kind of going into the sidebar and seeing what i need to clean up there as well i haven't looked in my notion in a couple of weeks and that's kind of rare for me but once again, I was on vacation, so that's the reason why. But anyway, let's get into this area. So when I was talking about my goals for April and starting my Q2 to-do list, this was what I was talking about. This is essentially a master to-do list with all of the things that I want to get done in Q2. And this is not exclusive. It's just a list of random bits and pieces that I want to make sure that I don't forget. So while it's not part of my traditional planner and it's not part of the tabs that I have over here, which have their own set of to-do lists, this one is just kind of miscellaneous and things that I want to make sure that I get to as well, in addition to the other things. Okay, so as you can see, I did get started. So, you know, A plus for me for getting started. I just realized I was really close to the screen there. Um, but yeah, A plus for me for getting started. I confirmed the kitchen paint color, if you can't see that. Um, it's a green. It's a sage green type of color, <laughs> if you did not see the updates there on Instagram. Research one major monetization stream. Um, I did have a conversation with well, like, regarding this, so I decided to cross that off because I feel like it was a big research point there. Assess my lemonade, what's working on the platform and how I can adapt in a low level way, which I decided that I will not be actively posting on lemonade really because I'm just not seeing a future there for me, but I don't know. I still consistently get notifications from the platform, so we'll see if I revisit that. And then the last thing is starting the garden. That was a big, big one that I really wanted to get started on in the beginning part of Q2. So that was a big accomplishment, of course, for April. Okay, so now the things that I need to clean up. So spring bedroom project, as you saw earlier in this video, I did get started on that. So I'm going to cross that out and I'm gonna consider it completed because the major thing, which was getting the dresser out and doing a DIY kind of wardrobe in the closets was the biggest thing. So crossing that out, update capsule wardrobe. So what I'm gonna do here is, I think I'm going to highlight it and turn it red and then cross it off. And what this essentially is, meaning to me is that I'm just not going to move forward with it. So I'm crossing it out, but I also want to make clear that I'm just not working on it. Not that I crossed it off because I completed it because I don't think it's actually practical to do the capsule wardrobe in my notion. So what this essentially means, if you're confused as to what update capsule wardrobe means is, is that I have a tab here on my notion and I was keeping record of all of the clothing that I have. And then I, went through the whole spring cleaning project and I realized that it's actually a bit overwhelming to keep updating this constantly when it comes to clothing because I'm constantly going in and out with clothing. I can either pick up something random one day, I may donate a bunch the other day, and then I just have to do the extra work of updating this. So it's not really practical. So I think I'm just going to not do it, period. So with that being said, I have it crossed off in red and I'm going to archive this because I'm just not going to use it anymore. And I have an archive kind of folder over here and I'm just going to drag it in there. This is something that I made myself. This is not something that just comes with Notion. I like to keep an archive of things that I've worked on in the past in case there's a template in there that I can go back and revisit and use. So that's just me, you know, thinking proactively, which, you know, ends up working in my favor a lot of the times. But anyway, that's that. Now, the other things on my Q2 master list, which by the way, I feel like I've completed half of it already and I still have a couple more months, so I'm not in any rush, but looking into podcast ads slash promos, this is something that I need to discuss with Ian since we do the podcast together. Get clothing for the wedding. So we have a wedding coming up in June. I'm going to move that one up to the top. 
accomplish 5330, all of these other things. I feel like I've talked about this before in my quarterly review me uh, video, so I won't dive into it that much. But basically, I have about half of my list left here for the remainder of Q2. Now that we've addressed the capsule wardrobe on this side, let's see what else I can kind of update. Let's look at our house projects or my house projects. Um, it looks like closet storage was the main spring project. I'm just going to open it up. As you can see, I was updating and like crossing off things when it comes to the shopping list. And I still have a couple of things that I need to purchase. A decorative stool, like I mentioned when it came to that pot that I showed you. Uh, a plant for the stool. Maybe I won't get a plant for the stool because I did get the pot, but I'll keep it there just in case. I'll just put plant, period, so that I know I want a decorative plant. And then a decorative ladder. I do like those. I think those are cute. I have one in my living room, so I would like to get that. And so with that being said, I'm not going to mark this as done, even though I did cross it off on my master list, because I just want to make sure that I buy these last three things before I do that. So there's that. The next thing that I want to get completed in May, so you'll probably see this in the May recap video, is to get some living room decor because now we need some things to fill up the space in there. And so I'll probably talk about this in the next month's video, but I did write some notes in there. So this is an inclusion that wasn't there last month. And I think that's pretty much it. All of these things that are in progress are for later parts of the year. My game tracker, I haven't really been playing games to be honest with you, but I have been reading, so that's fine. Nothing really to do with the wish list. What I need to do here is kind of update what I got for um, my garden. So I did not get basil, but I got chive. There's garlic, there's the tomatoes. I didn't get cherry tomatoes. I just got heirloom and plum. I got several kinds of peppers, so I need to duplicate. I think I got jalapenos, poblanos, poblano. I think I got sweet peppers and I got jalapenos. Um, I did get radishes. They were the French breakfast ones. Carrots, onion, spinach. I, did I get kale? I think I got kale. Lettuce, broccoli. I think I'm not missing anything there. One, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think I should just put somewhere... I'm not sure where to put this. I think wild flowers is the last thing that I'm missing here. Okay, so just updated that. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go into these because those are just far too much to get into. And then the last thing here is to archive the fish town because we already went to fish town. I don't need that board anymore because that has come and gone. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so I feel like I've taken you through a lot. So I will quickly just talk about May. And I don't really have much to talk about May because all I've done is set up my very standard traditional planner with usual stuff. So at the first of the month, I always do a budget tracker. Um, and then my goals that I have is to put away money for the month, which I always have get clothing for that wedding that I was talking about. That wedding is in June and we're coming into May. So I need to get the clothing this month and it's a multi-day type of wedding. So I need multiple outfits. Um, Q2 checklist is another goal. I think because I took some time off at the end of April, I feel like I really want to jump into my Q2 checklist in May. So just want to get through things there and then getting more gifts because I do have some birthdays in at the early part of June. So I want to get it done in May. I also have some gifts to get for May. So lots of random things, but just want to make sure that I cover everything. And I think that's pretty much it. There are a couple of holidays that I mentioned as well, but when it comes to goals, that's essentially what I've got going on. And then now is the first week of the month where I started doing like my weekly stuff. And 
it's pretty sparse because I just came back from vacation and I didn't want to overwhelm myself knowing that my nine to five job would be pretty hectic with me trying to catch up. So that's pretty much it. No, it's not. I completely forgot to go back into my monthly reflection and tell you about those May prompts. So going back to that now, my focus for May, I wrote down getting back into my Q2 checklist, which I kind of touched on already as well as consistent posting here on YouTube because I would like to post two times a week. I think I talked about that earlier in the year, but I haven't been doing so great in the past few weeks. My upcoming challenges for those focuses, is focus is a word, is scheduling and or creating content ahead of time to ensure that I can consistently post two times a week. And then how I plan to overcome that challenge is just planning weeks out appropriately and not waiting for the last minute, which I like to do. And yeah, that's pretty much the parts that I missed out. Sorry about that. That is all for this video. I feel like it was enough as is, so I'm sure you're sick of hearing from me, but I hope this video was helpful. Happy May. Good luck to you when it comes to your May goals. Let me know if you have any goals for May. Leave them down in the comment section or if you have any wins that you'd like to celebrate together from April. But thank you so much for checking out this video and I will talk to you in next week's video.